Welcome back to another episode of In the Kitchen with CCK. Hi, I'm Coach Chef Kim and welcome to my kitchen. So fall is my favorite season. I love it. I love when the leaves change colors. I, I love the whole bit, okay? Pumpkin spice me, yes. Sweet potato me, yes. I am here for all the flavors of fall and over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna share some of my favorite recipes with you. In addition to showing you when you can invite your kids into the kitchen while you're creating recipes, okay? So some of our recipes over the next couple of weeks will be strictly kid friendly. The kids can stay 100% of the time, but then others of them will be like today's recipe where they're gonna have moments when they need to pop into the kitchen to learn how to do something and then leave again because this recipe takes several hours. Now, another reason I'm going to do this recipe today is because it is in service to bringing back old school desserts with a new school flair. So for today, we are going to be working on a sweet potato cheesecake brownie. I know, right? That's a total mouthful. For those of you who actually want to make this, I'm going to list all the ingredients down below, but you can actually pop over to CoachChefKim.com and download the sweet potato cheesecake brownie recipe from there. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do after we wash our hands is to also wash our sweet potatoes. I have my oven preset to 375 degrees. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you do that. After we wash our sweet potatoes, we will pat them dry and then we're gonna wrap them in aluminum foil. They're gonna go into the oven for 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how long it takes for your sweet potatoes to become tender. And then from that point, we'll pick back up. So let's get started. Alright, so it's been about an hour. My potatoes have cooked. They are tender to the touch and it's still a little warm. So I did let these sit for just a little bit, maybe about 20 minutes, um, so that it's a little easier to handle the sweet potatoes. So we're going to unwrap them and then you can just use a small steak knife to take off the skin of the potato. It is still very hot, even though I let it sit for a little bit. She's still real hot. So we're gonna carefully do this. Um, and so remember how I talked about there will be moments where the kids can participate in moments where I don't recommend it. So this is gonna be one of those moments, right? If you got little kids, you can call them in and tell them about kitchen safety. Like, hey, you wanna watch mommy or daddy do this? Um, you know, our sweet potatoes are done. Don't they smell good? What does it smell like? Uh, what color is our sweet potato, right? It's like our sweet potato is orange. As we begin to mix it though, we're gonna lose a little bit of the color, which is why we have our orange food coloring, just to add a little bit back into it. That is totally optional. You do not have to, um, but because this will be on the blog and I have to take pictures of it, I'm gonna make it just a little bit more orange so it looks a little more true to color um, for the photo. But if you are a person who does not wanna add anything extra, totally, totally fine. It's not a big deal. So now that I've gotten, that off stereo. so now we're gonna take this I'm gonna cut it for easier handling um, and I'm gonna drop it into my mixer it is falling apart fully so let's grab a spoon and put it inside of there so I've got my first piece we're gonna do our second piece and then I'm gonna take it off my second one now I can already see I've got a piece that's just gonna be stringy we're gonna take that off and remove it okay beautiful and now we're gonna do our second one 
Um, if you end up with extra sweet potatoes, when this is over with, you can turn the extra into a couple of different things. So you could definitely, number one, just make mashed sweet potatoes and have that for dinner. Um, if you got babies, you can use that as baby food. It's a baby puree. Um, you can put it in something else, right? You can use the sweet potatoes to make all sorts of things. Um, you can turn them into cinnamon rolls. You can turn it into cake. You can turn it into like a mini pie if you wanted to. There's just so many things you can do with the sweet potato. Highly, highly encourage you to look at different ways to use the ingredients that you have. And if you've already got all the ingredients for this recipe, you definitely have plenty of different things you can make with this. Um, and I'm gonna be real honest, right? You can turn this into a sweet potato pie dip, like a dip of sweet potato puree. Add your brown sugar and your granulated sugar into it. We'll drop a heavy cream and mix her up. Throw in these beautiful fall spices. Eat it with some marshmallows or crackers, graham crackers. So many things you can be doing with it, okay? So now I'm gonna take this and put it in there and then our final piece. Beautiful. So now that we have that, we are going to mix this. I'm gonna wash my hands. We are going to mix this um, with a whisk attachment. So this is a Bosch mixer that I'll be using for this project. Um, whatever mixer you have works, just make sure you use a whisk attachment. One of the reasons we are doing this is so we can cool it off. We need to cool this off so we can work with it. <laughs> so we're gonna use our whisk instead of the paddle. It's gonna incorporate more air. It's gonna cool it off. So I'm gonna let this mix for a couple of minutes, probably about, I don't know, maybe three to four minutes because it is a Bosch. If you have a mixer that is not as powerful, you might need to mix it a little bit longer, but we want it to be smooth like a puree. And I'll be right back. All right, so now that we have our sweet potatoes all mixed, we want to remove our whisk. We're gonna leave all the excess sweet potato inside. And then I'm just gonna give it a little mix to make sure that we don't have any like strings or anything like that in it. Um, we wanna make sure that our puree is a puree and that she's really, really soft, really, really smooth. So I'm just kind of moving it around, trying to see if I see any really stringy pieces and I do not. So this is beautiful. We've got a gorgeous sweet potato puree. So we're gonna leave this set to the side right now. And this is probably gonna be about three cups of the mashed sweet potatoes. So I'm gonna move this one over. And for the next part of this, we are going to start building our flavors and building how we're gonna bring this brownie together, okay? So first things first, at this point, if you have not taken your eggs out of the oven, I'm sorry, if you haven't taken your eggs out of the fridge, remove your eggs from the refrigerator and set them in a bowl of warm water. The reason we're gonna do that is so that we can bring it up to room temperature. We don't wanna leave our eggs sitting out to bring them to room temperature because it's gonna change the grade. So you know when you buy them, they're grade A eggs. But when you leave them out all day to bring them to room temperature, it changed the grading of the eggs. So we're gonna, I'm gonna grab two out of the fridge, put them in some warm water, while I begin working on the next part of this. So now I have melted two sticks of butter. Just a word of caution, if you are going to melt butter, make sure you don't just like put it on a minute and throw it in the microwave. It will explode. Um, I've learned that from experience. So when you're melting your butter, just put it on about 30 second increments. I typically check it every 15 seconds or so. Um, and then I'll just kind of gauge it with my eyes and see if we've reached it to a point. So we've reached to a point where I know if I let it keep going, it will explode in my microwave. So most of it has melted. The rest of it, I can just whisk it together. So for this part, you can use a whisk, like see, just like that. Everything's fully melted from the residual heat. You can use a whisk or you can use a hand mixer if that's easier for you. 
So for this part, we're gonna add our sugars. So I've got my granulated sugar, as well as my brown sugar. And these two, I'm just gonna give a good mix inside of here. One of the things I can tell you, if you're someone like me who struggles with strengthening your hands, um, you might want to use a hand mixer. You might. But if you're also like me and you struggle with your hands and you don't want to wash all the dishes, then you might want to use a whisk. So, you know, listen, pick your poison. Totally up to you. So we're going to mix this up. Beautiful. Now I'm going to add in my spices. So this is cinnamon and nutmeg. I'm going to add those two. If you want to add cloves or allspice, that is also something you could do. Whatever your favorite flavors of um, sweet potato or pumpkin pie are, add those. Because it's going to come out in this brownie and be incredible. But I just decided to go with cinnamon and nutmeg because those are my favorites. You can also use an apple pie or a pumpkin pie seasoning, like a little spice mix that you get from the store. Or you can make your own. Look at CoachChefKim.com and I've got those up there for you. So my eggs have been in some warm water and now they have come to room temperature. So we're going to do one egg at a time. If you are working with kids while you do this part, you want to make sure that once they crack the egg, number one, crack it into a smaller bowl. Number two, once they do this, um, they need to wash their hands immediately, right? So you crack your egg, you have it inside of your bowl, and then they pour it in and then they immediately go wash their hands. We want to make sure that we are teaching them to keep their hands clean while they are working. Don't let them lick their fingers. This is something I never did when I used to teach kids in the kitchen. No licking fingers in Chef Kimberly's kitchen, ever. So we're gonna give these a good mix and then I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of a high quality vanilla. What does that mean? Um, It just means it's not imitation vanilla. It's actual vanilla, so just get some pure vanilla. If you wanna be fancy, you can use vanilla bean, you can use a vanilla bean paste. Either one works. So this is coming together beautifully. All right, so next we're going to add our flour in just a little bit at a time. Make sure you hold on to your bowl. We're gonna give her a good mix. Again, if you are someone who struggles with strengthening your hands, use a hand mixer for this part. So, once this comes together with our flour, we're not gonna over mix it. it it's just incorporated. It's lightened up a little bit and just incorporated, okay? So now, I'm gonna start adding my sweet potatoes. Or sweet this. potatoes, if as you're going, you see any pieces that you missed before, it's okay to take them out. This is why we continuously wash our hands throughout this process. Adding it in, so I'm gonna mix that together before I add in this last bit of the sweet potatoes. So this is essentially our brownie batter. So this is a sweet potato brownie batter. She's loosening up the more sweet potatoes we add to it. This is another reason why I didn't want to do the sweet potatoes in water, because if you boil them, you're going to incorporate more water into the sweet potatoes than we actually need. And it might make it a little more soupy than I want it. So by roasting my sweet potatoes, baking them in the oven, not adding in extra water. Beautiful. All right, so we're going to give this last little part a mix right here. And just looking at this based on the color, right, I haven't added any of the orange food coloring in it. I'm going to add just a little drop. Not a lot, 
just a little bit. If you only have, I'm using a gel color, so a little bit goes a long way. If you only have liquid colors, then you can use liquid colors. But now I'm gonna start this together. She's gonna be a little more orange than it was before, but not like too much orange where it doesn't look real. So at this point, this is when you want to taste your batter. So parents working with kids or grown-ups who like to lick the spoon, you are not going to dip your finger into this batter to taste it. We don't do that here. You're gonna grab an actual spoon. I recommend using um, plastic spoons. That way everyone gets a little taste. And at this point, you wanna taste it for balance. You wanna make sure that this tastes like a sweet potato pie. Absolutely delicious absolutely delicious so now I know that my brownie base is exactly where I want it to be we're gonna set her aside the next thing that we're gonna do is make our cheesecake batter that is gonna go with this and then we will layer up our brownies pop them in the oven and they will be ready okay so now we're gonna prepare our cheesecake batter for the brownies so I'm starting with two blocks of softened cream cheese and this has been sitting out since the beginning to come to room two. So I'm gonna mix this together until smooth. So once we mix our cream cheese mixture, bringing it together, um, if that's too thick for you while you're mixing it, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add in my heavy cream and vanilla. So this is about a tablespoon of heavy cream and vanilla, and then I'm also going to add in my sugar. And this should make it a little easier for me to be able to maneuver while I'm trying to do this with a hand mixer. One of the things that I like to do is let these flavors go all the way across. So I'm gonna add in just a little bit of cinnamon and mix that in. But I'm also gonna start adding in my eggs. Now, we're doing two eggs. These have been brought to room temp by sitting in water. We've got one. And two. Beautiful. One of the things that I'm sure you can tell by now is that I clean as I go. So make sure that you are teaching those skills to your children. And if you yourself as an adult did not learn that, clean your kitchen as you go. That way you don't have a whole lot of mess to clean up. So I'm gonna bring this batter together and then set her aside and then we'll start layering. So at this point, we are fitting out our pie crust into the pan. I did spray my pan with a nonstick spray on both the bottom as well as the sides. Um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut off those pieces and then I'm going to end up refitting them into the pie crust like once the two are stacked wherever it feels a little thin. And I wanted it to maybe just be a little thicker so that the crust won't break.
So at this point, I'm reserving about three-fourths of a cup of the cheesecake batter. The rest I'm going to pour straight on top of my pie crust. I'm going to spread this out evenly. And then I'm going to come on top of this with... Um, the sweet potato batter now the little bit that i did save you're gonna see me use a piping bag for it um i tried to use the measuring cup that it was in but that did not work so i'm gonna end up using a piping bag to pipe on the cheesecake batter on the top in order to get the designs Okay, so in order for us to get the design on the top, you're going to see me piping lines of the cheesecake batter straight across. Try and do this as straight as you can. My hands are a little shaky, um, but it's fine. So I came back and added more where there needed to be more cheesecake batter. Once I realized how much I had left over, I prefer using a skewer for this process, but I could not find any. So we're using a knife um, and it's a sharp pointy knife. So just make sure you're only going across the top of this and you don't go deep into your batter because then you risk um, cutting up your cheesecake down beneath. All right, so now our brownies are in the oven. They are baking at 375. For 45 minutes or until it turns golden brown they are also uncovered so during this 45 minute like during this 45 minute time i call this a transition period so what you want to do is make sure you clean up any dishes that you have left over from our layering of the brownies you want to get those started so that when it's time for you to take them out the oven that's not something you have to worry about right Particularly if you're working with kids, they understand, okay, we're done with all the utensils that we used and now it's time for us to clean up. So for me, I like to turn it into a dance party, play some music, clean up all the things. It doesn't feel like such a daunting task. Now, I do have some disappointing news. Once it comes out of the oven, you can't eat it right away. So it's going to need some time to chill. It needs time to come down to room temperature before you can slice it. It will have to sit at room temp for about two and a half to three hours. That way our brownies don't fall apart. So make sure you allow it to do that little bit of processing at the end of the recipe. Speaking of recipes, did you know you can go to CoachChefKim.com and grab all sorts of sweet and savory recipes, including some tutorials that are perfect for you working in the kitchen with your children. In addition to that, I am so honored and so pleased and so blessed to be able to announce that the Teach Me How to Bake Academy is now open. So what does that mean for you? Inside of our Whisk and Flour Academy, it is currently only $49.99 for the whole year. Now, on, after Black Friday, that will go up. So we would love to get as many families inside of this membership as possible before the price goes up. But even when the price does go up, it's still an incredible deal for a year. Why? I'm glad you asked. So inside of this academy, I will be using the curriculum that I've already created from the Teach Me How to Bake book that you can purchase on Amazon. You can also purchase the ebook right on teachmehowtobake.com. Either one works. Inside of the workbook, it walks kids through understanding the science of baking and from what I've been told by my friends, even though it was designed for children, it works for anyone who wants to learn how to bake. You'll understand why we use certain things, why we use a whisk versus a paddle, why we need to have our eggs brought to room temperature. Like you learn all of these things that professional bakers are gonna know that the average person does not. In addition to that, inside of our membership, there will be a monthly drop from me. That's right, we're gonna have a monthly bake along. So every month there will be something specifically designed for the academy. Sometimes it'll be bread. Sometimes it'll be cupcakes. Maybe we're just making a bunch of different frostings. Or perhaps we're going to develop a master recipe and then I'm going to show you how to take that one recipe and turn it into multiple things. All of those things are coming to the Whisk and Flour Academy inside of Teach Me How to Bake. But if you are a homeschool mom or you are someone who teaches kids or teaches other adults how to do things culinary wise, guess what? I have an academy just for you too. So this one is called the Teach the Teacher series. Inside of 3T, our Teach the Teacher, that one is $47 a month. The reason being, I'm gonna walk you from A to Z 
how to start teaching classes. How do you create your own online content just like this YouTube channel? How are you going to develop the ebooks and the workbooks that your students are going to need from you? How do you handle classroom management when you are teaching classes? How do you get picked to teach at conferences? How do you even pitch your plan to a conference? How do you cut the drama out and just go grab a template to send an email to a company that you would like to teach classes at their upcoming summer camp? All of that and more will be inside of the Teach the Teacher, Teach Me How to Bake series. So if you're interested in those, just look down below. There will be a link for them. You can also visit teachmehowtobake.com and right there on the homepage, it says Baking Academy for those of you who are just families and you wanna learn more about baking. And then it says Instructor Academy for those of you who are wanting to learn how to teach. Now, here's a bonus for my instructors. Everything that's inside of the whisk and flour is also inside of Teach the Teacher. Simply because sometimes you need a frame of reference. You need to be able to watch me teaching so that you can then adopt those into your teaching, right? No one, look, I always think about the clear eyes guy, right? Like when you're in school or Charlie Brown's teacher, no one is listening to you. Well, I'm a very engaged teacher. So if you want to see how to keep your people engaged, how to keep them involved for long periods of time, I have included all of the same professionally recorded classes that I did for Whisk and Flower. They are inside of Teach the Teacher. We're gonna make this really easy for you. I don't want you to struggle and I do want you to diversify your income as a sweet or culinary professional. So make sure you look down below check out the Whisk and Flower Collective or the Teach the Teacher. I'm gonna get cleaning up while these sweet potato brownies are baking and then I'll be back and show you the final product. Well friends, we made it to the end of our episode. It's been about two and a half hours since I took our brownies out of the oven. They are delightful. They are absolutely delightful. I hope that you have enjoyed spending time with me in my kitchen today, and I hope that you make this for your family. See you guys.